Okay, now let's move on. So today, well, I don't think one day is enough, but let's talk about On Your Mark. It's both released on DVD or Blu-ray in Japan. It's 6 minutes 40 seconds long. It's a short movie. You can see the storyboard in this book along with Whisper of the Heart. Look here. You see the title on your mark written in small letters. It's hard to tell. This is pretty much the only reference we have. Actually, there are bits and pieces of info about it in these books. The largest resource comes from Anime Ju, <laughs> issued in August 1995. But this is the only other resource. The reference for this piece is so limited. Pretty tough. It's a music video made for Chage and Asuka. Famous in many ways, huh? This Japanese music duo commissioned Ghibli to make the video for their live concert. It was also going to be used as a promotion video. It was not typical of Miyazaki. He's not the type of guy to make a J-pop video. Then why did he take that job? Well... Uh, here. Geniuses thought published from Bungei Shunju, written by Toshio Suzuki. We started the project to make Princess Mononoke, and Miyazaki was developing the plot. But it didn't go well. He came up with the plot a long time ago, so he lost the feeling he had at that time. Then he thought, that plot was outdated. He went into a slump and couldn't proceed with his work. Then the project got stuck for about half a year. That was when Ghibli was offered to make the promotion video of the song by Chage and Asuka, On Your Mark. Suzuki didn't really know about them, but Suzuki said he jumped on the offer. He wrote, I had an intuition that this would change Miyazaki's mood. This is what Suzuki wrote, but I personally think the real reason is hidden behind the opening date of On Your Mark, July of 1995. In March 1992, Porco Rosso was released. Then, in 1994, the last chapter of Naushka was published in the magazine Animeju. Then, in July 1994, Pompoko was released. So, what does all this mean? Ghibli was in a financial crisis. Porco Rosso wasn't like the biggest hit. And the manga of Naushka, the biggest merchandise at the time, finished. Sure, Pompoko was a hit, but not enough to make a profit. Ghibli was still small at that time, unlike how they are nationally famous today. Only anime fans watched their work. Suzuki must have had a strong sense of danger. It's hard to imagine today, but Suzuki was dying to get Ghibli more publicity. And Chage and Asuka had that. It was a time when he thought if Ghibli didn't produce something appealing for the major audience, they would go bankrupt. He wrote, We could examine Princess Mononoke from a different point of view, thanks to the production of this short movie, On Your Mark. Let me explain how the production of Princess Mononoke began in the first place. It goes back to 1980. Miyazaki wrote this children's book with the same title, which is about a cute girl being kidnapped by a spirit. Miyazaki turned this story into the storyboard. But after he made On Your Mark, he said, okay, let's sauce everything and start all over. That's how he created the story that we know. He changed the story about a princess being kidnapped by a spirit 
into something where a boy named Ashitaka is cursed by a god, but later grows up to be an independent man. On your mark, surely changed Miyazaki's mood. But not only that, this short movie became the most radical work made by him. So... There's this extremely long interview book by Miyazaki called Starting Point. There, Miyazaki talks about On Your Mark. Let me put it here. Okay. In this book, he says that he intentionally distorted the meaning of the lyrics. He says he did that maliciously and made a movie full of malicious intentions. Today, I will break this movie into six different layers and explain one by one because there are six different ways to see this work. Uh, someone just wrote the comment that I'm analyzing the subtext, but that's different. Because these six different viewpoints are in layers, which means as you go from one layer to another, you understand this work more and more. In the free part, I'll just do layer one and two. In layer one, I'll narrate the simple plot so anyone can keep up with it. But I'll make sure to indicate things that people usually miss out. Layer two, I will talk about how Miyazaki hid his malicious intentions in the movie. In a way, the clients couldn't notice them. There are three different intentions, so I'll explain them. Layer 3, Miyazaki hit a secret theme which even hardcore anime fans can't figure out. Layer 4, there's Miyazaki's response to Beautiful Dreamer. And Angel's Egg by Mamoru Oshii. And Only Yesterday by Isao Takahata. Layer 5, Miyazaki has hidden a secret message that only he could understand as to what kind of work he should be making. Layer 6, I'll talk about the great influence of this movie on Miyazaki's works after this one. So again, I won't get to the last layer today, so I'll talk about it in the next lecture. Okay, so layer 1. Um... An unexpected beginning. The title says Ghibli Experimental Theater. There are no other works by Ghibli that have this title. Five seconds of silence and boom, the title. Then the intro. Dun, dun, dun. I'll just sing it for you. Dun, 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 dun. Then you see a grass field. It's a beautiful landscape, but you also see rotten barbed wire blocking people. Then you see a grotesque looking building in the back. And next. Just imagine this scene moves from right to left like this. The town is abandoned and no one lives there. And you can see how gigantic that black, grotesque building is. And then, here, you see the title, On Your Mark, Chage and Asuka. Can you please zoom in on the truck? Inside this huge truck are Chage and Asuka. So the title appears after the landscape scene. Then you hear the drums. Dun, 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 dun. Then the scene suddenly switches from a peaceful landscape to this. Several airplanes with the police sign appear and they dive straight into this tunnel at a furious speed. 
The atmosphere becomes intense with so much speed, a drastic change from the last scene. The planes go through the tunnel, and there is this super suspicious tower that has a neon sign on the top saying, God is watching you. And the eyes here are opening and closing. The planes fly straight into this building. And... Here... So, the planes break through the windows to enter the building. Up to here is the intro, a peaceful landscape with the melody. Dun, dun, dun. Then the drums. Dun, 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 dun. Then the planes fly into this building and boom that moment the song starts the song begins the timing is perfect and so cool the planes crash into the building when the song starts and then a gun battle the police are perfectly trained they're more like the military than police. The lyrics indicate that they have the usual look and smile as they start shooting the guns. On the other hand, the cult members are powerless since they have weak firepower, while the police are using bombs. The police members have gas masks on because they use poison gas when they break into the building. But the cult members don't have such defenses, so all they can do is retreat. Incredible lyrics! So, the usual look and smile means this is what they always do. They kill, and they remove the dust. Well, it's not the dust they are trying to remove, it's the blood. They're changing their blood-stained clothes daily. This sequence might remind you of Aum Shinrikyo crimes, but this anime was made before that happened, so Miyazaki depended solely on his own imagination. It to depict, well, not exactly the future world, but the world he desired to depict. So as soon as the police start attacking, Fukuo Harata. Oh, when it says, oh, the bomb explodes. The images and the song synchronize so well. Like I said, the police break in as soon as Chage and Asuka start singing. Then, when they sing, oh, the bomb explodes and the flame spreads from right to left. Just brilliant. In this picture, you see more than 10 flying patrol planes completely suppressing the building. Everything happens up to here, non-stop. Yeah. Quite amazing, really. Ochite yuku coin wa a dead girl on the floor. When we think of a cult, we only think of a bunch of middle aged men. But that's not true. Here is a young girl dressed in clothes provided to the worshippers. It's baggy because they only have the size for adults. A police officer picks her up, and in order to confirm her death, he drops her on her head. The girl still doesn't move, so she's dead. That's what the lyrics indicate here. The coin drops and doesn't return. 
Okay, I'm pretty sure that dropping coin didn't mean death when it was written. Nidoto kaeranai. And you see a backlight. Then the police officer is checking the bodies. Because if anyone is alive, they'll kill them. They won't let any of the members live. That's what this scene means. There is a reason why the police officers are lit by the backlight. The backlight obscures their looks and makes them look less human. You get that kind of effect with backlight. It's only been 90 seconds since the scat. Oh! In the beginning, up to this point. Only 90 seconds from the scat and 40 seconds since the lyrics. This part is called A Melody, which is distinctive in J-pop. It normally goes like A Melody, B Melody, Pre-Chorus and Hook Chorus. So it only takes A Melody to finish the gun battle and now they're confirming the death of the cult members. This is Miyazaki's genius. The song indirectly tells us that the police officers kill people and change the blood-stained clothes every day. I'll talk more about this in layer 2. Then the police officer drops the girl's face onto the floor. This song, On Your Mark, is originally supposed to be a love song, and the dropping coin, which doesn't return, insinuates something like a broken heart. But Miyazaki turned the love song into a more cruel story. So I think this first 90 seconds of this anime is the most shocking beginning scene in the world of animation. Do you remember a scene in the film Evangelion where the United Nations force slaughters the members of Nerve? That scene obviously received a very strong influence from On Your Mark, which is again only 6 minutes and 40 seconds long. I mean, no animation had ever depicted such a cruel scene. Amazingly, Miyazaki didn't only invent it, he did it in a 90 seconds long sequence of a J-pop music video. He's one crazy man. Sorry, let me change the boards. If I mess up the order, I'll be in big trouble. 15, 12, I have so many images to show today. <laughs> this can go, this too, I'll need this, I'm so bad at this. Okay, I finished up to here. Um, this goes in here, okay. We are on B melody. Then the first incident. After 1 minute and 36 seconds, I wrote the time just in case. In the back, you see a girl with wings on her back. Then finally, you see Chage and Asuka, the main characters. And they come out. This, the later part of B Melody, Chage and Asuka find out that the girl had wings on her back. This is an important scene, so please remember. Compared to the A melody part that was 40 seconds long, the B melody part is only 10 seconds. A melody part depicts cruelty. But the B melody part depicts a small miracle. Deep inside a religious cult building is a girl with wings who's mistreated. Miyazaki is saying this is such a mistreatment, a denial of humanity. Look, she's chained. How cruel. And she's forced to drink Coke. How cruel. It's famous that Miyazaki hates Coke. I knew it too. But really, that much? Chained on the concrete floor, definitely. But drinking Coke? Okay. Watch this old anime. 
flying phantom ship. It's about this drink called boa juice, which is actually Coke. Kids around the world drink it and their brains melt. Then the human race is ruled by monsters. It's a strong criticism against Coke. Miyazaki did the animation and design for this movie. So yeah, he was always pretty extreme. But this time, he even wrote the brand name. And he's like, what a cruel torture. Now, this is the hook or the chorus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, you see them driving in a yellow convertible. I believe it's called Alfa Romeo Giulietta. I don't know so much about cars. Anyway, this is a relatively happy scene, which suggests what will happen to them from now. It also makes us anticipate a happy ending. On your mark is the first hook, and it comes with a happy, hopeful scene. On your mark, itsumo hashiri daseba. And here, Chaga stands up and the girl opens her wings and tries to fly. The girl looks worried, as if to say, Do you think I can fly? Then Chaga seems to encourage her, Of course you can. Like this. Do you think I can fly? And Chaga responds, Of course you can. Then he pushes her upwards. Then finally, she flies properly. It's a good scene. But after this, the scene instantly switches back to reality. If you listen to the lyrics here, it goes, On your mark, itsumo hashiri daseba. Next, hayari no kaze ni yarareta. So it talks about a challenge and failure. Yarareta indicates the failure, and that's when the scene goes back to reality. And you have this high angle view of the room. It means that this scene is not real. It's just an imagination that Chage and Asuka have when they see the captured girl, but it makes the audience expect that it will happen for real. It's the desire of Chage and Asuka to drive a yellow Italian car that they wish to have, give this pretty girl a ride, then free her to the outside world. Because the audience has continuously seen extremely dark and brutal scenes, they hope that this story will end happily like this scene. But then instantly, they have to go back to the reality and confront it again. Here, the hook repeats. On your mark. Then, the two are carrying the girl and running towards the center. Here, notice how no one is being arrested in this particular scene. I'll explain it during layer 2. Is this correct? No, it's this one. On your mark, Bokura ga, sore demo yame nai ino wa. Chage lets her drink water. The girl manages to open her mouth slightly and starts drinking. The guys feel relieved and smile. Wow, it's so hard to explain an anime thinking some of you haven't watched it. Plus, I'm singing, so my voice is hoarse. A girl is being rescued by the ambulance crew. And you notice how she's surrounded by the crew dressed in protective clothing. They close the zipper of the white body bag and this yellow cover wraps it entirely. The crew seems way too cautious. I thought maybe she's sick. Oh, sorry, wrong direction. 
夢の斜面見上げて行けそうな気がするから Here the girl is on the plane and the door closes You see this uncanny symbol on the door Then the plane flies away So Chage and Asuka save the girl but now she's being treated like an experimental animal? Chage and Asuka stare at the leaving plane and feel somewhat miserable However they are still at work. So they have to go back to work. Chage passes Asuka his gun. Then both return to work. This is verse 1. A melody is 40 seconds long. B melody, 10. Then the hook. So it's a total of 2 minutes and 40 seconds up to this point. The bridge part comes in here. Chan, chan, chan. And here, Chage and Asuka look a bit sulky. Soshite bukura wa. Then you see one of them put down the glass cup on the table. Like this. It hits the table with the sound. Then verse 2 begins. I mean, I wish all music video directors were as good as Miyazaki. The scene shows the daily life of the two, which should be less dramatic, but Miyazaki gave an impact like that. And then... Verse 2 begins. The girl has been carried to the hospital, but not very humanely. Is that the way it should be? The scene where Chage and Asuka stare at the leaving plane is 8 seconds long. Considering that the whole movie is less than 7 minutes, 8 seconds of them just standing and staring is very long. It means something is still bothering them, and they still aren't relieved, so they keep questioning while they are drinking cheap liquor. So they are drinking unhappily. The storyboard says Chage is eating pickled yams in this scene. They're like, so we did what we could, save the girl, but something doesn't feel right. Then comes a slightly mysterious scene. We're looking at Asuka from outside through a round window. He's manipulating something. They've started carrying out a plan. And you see Chage soldering some mysterious equipment. And you see Asuka doing something like hacking on a computer. I'm sorry, let me clear some boards. This can go... not this. So many boards today. I still need all these. This one. This too. These are all foreshadowing. Phew. I don't like this. It's so hard to talk about this anime. Okay. Asuka looks into the computer screen with this facial expression of, I did it! Then Chage walks in with the strange equipment in his hand. So it looks like the two have finally figured out a way to deceive the system and rescue the girl. So, from the bridge part, and all the way until the A melody of verse 2, shows the story where Chage and Asuka decide to rescue the girl, then succeed in preparing for their mission. Things go faster from here. Somehow, they've managed to get the protective clothing as they walk. 
針の消えた時計の文字を読むような。Then behind them are those big symbols on the wall, like saying, go ahead, read them. As the lyrics here say, 読む or read. Now, one of the devices Chage was making sends gas into these suits through mouths. It doesn't kill the people inside, but just inflates the suits so that they can't move. Compared to those cruel scenes in the beginning, the scene is rather comical. We almost can't believe something cruel happened before. Chage and Asuka beat these inspectors one by one. B melody goes, Kimi to boku, subete o. Here, the two leave the laboratory and enter into a red room. Things happen so smoothly here, but it's depicted as comedy. It makes you giggle and feel relaxed. The control room in the back is. Protected by laser beams and barriers, and so many sensors. Kimi to boku, subete o mitomete shimau ni wa wakasugiru. The device that Chage was soldering earlier disables all the sensors. Then they savagely climb up the machinery like monkeys. Then they take the girl out of the container. でそれでこの女の子を助け出すシーンになります。で、えー、ここはあの。The lyrics aren't written on the board, but we are in the B melody part. It goes, みとめてしまうにはわかすぎる。Oh yeah, Chage and Asuka carry the girl and run away through the hallway. It's still a comical scene. Oh, it's already been 50 minutes. Oh no, I only got to do half. This is insane. Free part's gonna be longer than an hour. I'm sorry. Well, just think of this scene as a comedy like Loop on the Third. On your mark. This is the hook again. Then Chage starts taking off his suit, and he can't help smiling. The girl is still covered by cloth. There was the bridge part before the hook, so I guess he couldn't wait anymore. Itsu mo hashiri daseba, and they push the girl into the truck. Next. Itsu mo hashiri daseba. The truck wheels spin vigorously. Then the tires expand due to the centrifugal force. Then the truck starts moving. It really feels like watching Loop on the Third up to this point. And then you start seeing more actions. Hayari no. The truck is leaving the building. Hayari no kaze ni yarareta. Then the truck comes out of the exit. Okay, I'll just move to the next image. It's a large image. It's a scene where the truck is escaping. Here is the truck. On your mark, the hook repeats for the second time. Then the camera pans from bottom to up. Then gradually you see that the entire city was an underground dome. So Chage and Asuka have escaped from the underground and go up the road. Then you can slightly see the ground. It's a scene that tells us Chage and Asuka are heading to the ground. Now these tiny dots are the patrol planes. So they get on a highway, see the ground level, and think they've made it. However, those patrol planes that attacked the coal earlier are coming down in a group to attack their truck. This one scene explains a lot. On your mark, Bokura ga. Then what was it? Oh yeah, Kore o nakuse na ino wa.
One after another, the police planes come down to get them. These planes are pretty scary. They come really close to the truck. They come so close to the point, you can see the pilots in the cockpit of this plane. They come down as if they were trying to crush the truck. This is the viewpoint of Chage and Asuka, the girls between them. The two are in the front seats, and they're looking at the spinning pilot lamp attached to the bottom of the patrol plane. The plane uses its own weight to crush the truck. Next. And you see Asuka desperately accelerating the truck in order to dodge this plane. Here, Chage is still holding the girl. The plane lands on the highway to crush the truck. The plane destroys the highway road. It resembles a scene in Japuta where the castle in the sky collapses. Okay. The plane hits the highway and explodes. The truck falls off the highway. The highway is completely destroyed. Now, after the truck falls from the highway, next, 4 minutes and 18 seconds, this is where the hook ends. Then a long bridge part begins. Chan, 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 chan. In the first hook, the two rescued the girl and let her fly away. It's a happy ending. But in the second hook, it's a failure, which is effective in order to emphasize the comeback of Chage and Asuka in the later half. There are many good scenes, even though it's a bridge to the later half. It shows a failure, but there's so much to see. This bridge part is 25 seconds long. During that part, the truck slowly drops. Then Chage and Asuka get out of the truck to let the girl go. This is one of the good scenes. Next, they are trying to let the girl go. Asuka keeps telling her to fly, but the girl somehow doesn't fly. Chage also encourages her. This scene has no sound except for the song, which makes it better. It's like watching a silent film, because you can't hear them talk and only hear the music. You can directly feel the kindness of the two men. They seem to be saying, don't worry about us, just fly. But the girl won't let her hands go and keeps shaking her head, no. Well, there's more to it, which I'll explain later. Hmm. Or maybe I'll explain now. Remember how I often say there are meanings to the directions people face? It's stage direction theory in Japan. When a character is facing left, they have the control to move the situation forward. But when they're facing right, like the girl in this image, they try to stop the situation. When she falls, she's looking towards the right. But as she continues to fall, she slowly changes direction. This means the girl is trying so hard to stop Asuka and Chage from falling. The change in the direction of her face depicts that without using any lines. But somehow, she doesn't use her wings to save the two men. I'll explain this mystery later on.
But here, just remember how the positions of camera or the directions actors are facing can be very meaningful. Chaga and Asuka tell her to leave them and fly, but the girl doesn't let go of their hands. As you can see, the three of them free fall with the truck towards the bottom of the city as if they're falling all the way into an abyss. I think this scene is pretty cruel. Really, if you see the movie, you see them fall straight into the center of the screen, to the bottom, until they are too small to even recognize. It's so hopeless. Like I said, this bridge part is so well made, partly because there are no lyrics. The girl tries to save Chaga and Asuka, but fails. She somehow doesn't use the wings. Then, the truck falls endlessly. You feel that there is no hope. This is when you hear a shout, Soshite Bokura wa! Then, the third hook. A melody, B melody, the first sabi, then A and B melody of verse 2. The second hook, a long bridge, then you hear the shout, So bokura wa. Now you hear the third hook. In terms of the anime, what happens now is that they go back in time. The slaughter scene comes back. On your mark, itsumo hashiri daseba. Then the rescue scene also comes back. Next, hashiri daseba. Oh, wrong direction again. The girl flies all the way up to the sky, so high that her wings shine like silver. Now, I'm sure some people explain that this story has multiple endings, but that's not what's happening. Miyazaki doesn't belong to that generation. So, multiple endings, no endless eight. Trust me, a creator from his generation would come up with something different. Hashiri daseba, and you see the angel ascend. The escaping scenes repeat several times for some reason. With the same hook, on your mark, sore de mo, and you think same thing again? Oh, this one first. You think it's just repeating? Then suddenly, you see jets coming from the truck. You see these jet flames from everywhere. And it doesn't only save them from falling, but it starts ascending. I mean, how the hell, right? Well, the storyboard says, with guts. It actually does, indeed. The truck keeps ascending inside the underground city. But it collides into a residential building. It's almost at the top of the building. The truck flies that high with the jet. Then they get out of the house into a hallway, which looks like a ghetto. They run away with the girl in their arms. This also resembles a comical scene in Lupin the Third. You hear the third hook. 
It feels like the time has rewinded, and they are starting the mission over. The storyboard here says eternal recurrence. I'll explain what that means later. This scene where the truck turns into a rocket seems to lead to the happy ending. Then, then another hook. Then suddenly they're driving a luxury sports car inside this tunnel. On your mark, itsu mo. Then you see a sign that says caution. Life is not guaranteed. And this one says caution, sunlight ahead. After passing these signs, they get out of the tunnel. As they go outside, they see these strange buildings. So they have successfully escaped the underground. They're all smiling. The scene looks like a happy ending. Okay, we got up to the escape. I'll clear the boards up to number 60. 60s go here. There are so many boards that I numbered them. Otherwise, it gets too chaotic. 50s here. Uh, maybe here. I'm almost done, sorry. As they leave the tunnel, they see that grotesque black building far in a distance. Here's a gate with another warning. It says extreme danger. Then again, on your mark. Then, the scene goes back to the first uninhabited town that appeared in the beginning. We finally got to the last scene that appeared before and we had expected to see. The difference from the similar scene in the beginning is that in this one the girl flies up by herself without Chage pushing her up and she's holding his hand. You still see that black building in the back. The girl has a different expression on her face. About this, the storyboard says the girl awakens. She realizes something, then gently looks down at Chage and Asuka. Then, next, hmm, oh, here, Chage winks at the girl, no, I mean Asuka, Asuka winks at the girl, then Chage kisses her palm, this is important, he only kisses her palm, I need you to remember this. She flies in the air. The storyboard says Ganko here. Gan is geese, and ko means to go. So it means flight of wild geese. When geese fly in a group, the leading goose keeps changing. Same thing is happening where the car gets ahead of the girl and vice versa. That's why it says flight of wild geese on the storyboard. As the girl ascends in the air, there's a town far ahead. But here, it's not the blue sky that's behind the girl. Instead, dark clouds appear in the back for a second, which is mean of Miyazaki, because it foreshadows that wherever she's going now doesn't have hope. 
However, the dark clouds disappear in the next moment. So, we forget about them quickly. Then, finally, the girl disappears into the extremely beautiful cobalt blue sky. Chage and Asuka keep waving at the girl. It's so well made because it looks like a great story. Oh, it's already been an hour. Oh, no. The camera chases her until she almost disappears. Then the song ends. It's like a whisper. No more lyrics, just the accompaniment. Then the story ends when the camera zooms out while showing the parked car. You see a small image of the car in the distance. It's 6 minutes and 36 seconds up to here. Then the scene fades out slowly, which takes about 4 seconds. Then the entire movie ends. This is layer 1. It's already been an hour. The story we see so far is that two men rescue a girl and free her to the sky. The girl flies away to a new world filled with hope. When she flies away, she looks down at the men smiling, as if to forgive the foolishness of us, humans, who have ruined the earth. It also seems to tell us that we should never give up, rewind the time, and try again and again. When this was shown at the live concert of Chage Nasuka, people must have taken it as a positive message. I mean, of course, it's a J-pop music concert. This is layer 1 that provides us a story which anyone can get. It's totally fine to stop here, but this lecture will go further. Now we are on to layer 2. Yes, we'll keep going since we have 5 more layers to go. But every time I get to the next layer, I'll completely deny the previous interpretation. In layer 2, I will discuss how the good story that layer 1 offers is completely wrong. Just like that, layer 2 denies layer 1, and layer 3 denies layer 2, layer 4 denies layer 3, and on and on. So, are you guys ready? This is the essence of this movie. That's why this is incredibly interesting. So, I'll end the free part with layer 2 and 3. Miyazaki hid his extremely malicious intentions in this movie. That's what I'll focus on for Layer 2. There are three different intentions, which you can see through several images. They can't be seen in other Miyazaki films, as he said, because his movies are usually for children. There were some aesthetics he had sealed, but this time he unsealed them, carefully enough so that the normal audience wouldn't be able to figure out. But real anime fans could, if they looked carefully enough. Those three intentions are violence, nuclear energy, and a girl with wings. Let me explain from the first one. Okay. First of all, these airplanes. As the airplanes go into the tunnel, the police emblems glitter. Why the emblem though? Why isn't the sign police enough? The emblem must remind Miyazaki of the riot police he used to fight when he was part of the student movement. It also tells us that it's Japanese police. And this story is based in Japan. This is a scene at the opening before the song starts. What's violent is the fact that they show the building before the police break in. If you look carefully, you can see people moving inside near the windows that the police are about to destroy. Miyazaki makes us see that cruelty explicitly, that is cruel. Then the song begins and the armed squad breaks into the cult facility with machine guns in their hands. And if you look here, you see it says, kill. 
I assume this is a display that shows many different commands, and today's command is to load the guns, and they are authorized to kill the cult members. I'm sure other commands are like arrest, etc. But since it says kill, it means the squad is going in to kill them. This is where the squad breaks into the building and starts shooting, where the lyrics suggest their daily life is to change blood-stained clothes. Oh, this one? This part made me think, okay, Miyazaki is really serious about depicting murder. These are only two cuts, but they show how abnormally the squad combats. This is a normal combat. Look at this. They're undercover. It's because the opponents might shoot back. Usually, gun battles are fought more carefully like this. This is normal. This one isn't. A man runs from the back, stands at the entrance of a room, then starts shooting while standing and without hiding. He can do this only because the opponents in the room have either surrendered or they're unarmed. If the enemies were armed, they would definitely hide and shoot. The people in the room must be begging for their lives, or maybe injured and can't fight back, so the police officer can shoot without worrying about their safety. Next image, after one officer leaves, the next one comes and throws a bomb into the room. So, they have no intention to arrest the cult members. They're following the command to slaughter them. Whether they surrender or not, or whether they are children or women, just kill them all. The TV series and the movie Evangelion came out in 1995, after On Your Mark was released. And the film Eva has the battle scene that's known for being cruel. What influenced that scene was this short movie. But most anime fans don't know this. The director of Evangelion, Hideaki Anno, found out what Miyazaki did in this movie and went, this is amazing, I can adapt this, which became Evangelion. But Miyazaki doesn't make his cruel expressions as obvious, which makes him one step higher than Anno. Only the people who watch this kind of scene intensively can understand how standing upright while shooting is nasty. So there's no way for people like the executives at a record company to get it. They actually didn't. I'm guessing even Toshio Suzuki couldn't get how extraordinary this scene is, shooting unresisting people and throwing bombs at them. The sign that said kill earlier proves that it was a command to kill these people. Now this, no. 87? Yep, 87. Like I said, the lyrics are interpreted as a metaphor of confirming death by picking up the body and dropping it. They'll shoot the girl if she is alive. That's why the officer has a gun in their hand. They use the right hand to pick up the body while holding the gun in the left hand. They'll shoot as soon as they see the body move, even by an inch. So... Well, I asked you earlier to remember the scene where the girl is taken away on an airplane. In that scene, no cult member had been arrested. The police squad broke into a cult facility, so there should be many prisoners who are taken away. But there's no such scene. Well, you get a glimpse of the leaders or potential witnesses being carried on stretchers in the corner of a scene. But that's about it.
All the police do is kill. They're entitled to do so. And Miyazaki shows us how. This is a badge that Chage and Asuka wear on their arms. Do you see? These are scales. Scales symbolize the judicial system, like the judges and lawyers. They are the police, but at the same time, they are judges. The police force is part of the administration, not the judiciary, but that separation of power doesn't apply to this world, so that a police officer can judge the criminals and execute them on the spot, which is shocking. Miyazaki expresses it only with one badge. Miyazaki must have been like, eh, the record company won't notice. How malicious. Miyazaki actually gave many hints. Kill sign that appears for a split second. The shooting of the unresisting people. The scene where Chaga and Asuka get drunk and doubt what they do. And the badges they wear with the symbol of balance. Miyazaki hid those hints. But none of them is so obviously depicted. I was surprised myself when I found them. Number 26. I showed you this scene earlier. This is where Chage and Asuka stare at the plane that takes the girl away. Here, Chage holds two guns. They see the plane leave. Chage gives the gun to Asuka, then both return to work. What it means by them going back to work is that, after they look so worried about that girl, they go back into the facility to kill the remaining cult members. There is both a devil and angel inside one person. They're nothing like a hero. Every day, they slaughter people with the usual look and smile. They even kill those who are unable to resist, if they are ordered to. They find a girl, and suddenly they pity her and see her go on the plane. But then they're like, okay, back to work. Take the guns and kill whoever is still alive. Then go home. With this malicious intention, Miyazaki clearly depicted such cruelty. He was not at all afraid to step into the darkness of humans and depict violence. Day after another, Chage and Asuka slaughtered people, so they eventually became numb to their conscience to do such a thing. But when they find the girl, their emotions come back. First one ends there. Then with the A melody of verse 2, their mission begins. Okay, so that was my explanation of the first malicious intention by Miyazaki. Violence. Second, malicious intention, nuclear energy. You can read what Miyazaki says in the book Starting Point. Well, it was originally an interview of Animeju. Which was later included in Starting Point. In this interview, the interviewer asked him, there's the strange black building that stands in the middle of that peaceful landscape. What is that building? Miyazaki replied, it's really up to your interpretation, but you see a truck with a radiation warning symbol right afterwards, so you'll get an idea. Miyazaki knew that the black building was a nuclear power plant, and there had been an accident there, but he didn't say it. He was like, I'm not going to tell you guys, Animeju. He had this in mind. If anyone sees that symbol and gets it, great. If not, who cares? Will Chage and Asuka and the record company know? Nah. There had already been the Chernobyl disaster before On Your Mark was made. But it was way before Fukushima and a few years before the accident at Tokaimura, which was pretty serious. So most Japanese people back in the mid-90s weren't familiar with the radiation symbol. Let alone alone the biohazard mark. Really, only a handful knew what they were. Miyazaki must have been upset that the Chernobyl disaster hadn't been thoroughly reported. 
That's why he believed he could draw the radiation symbol here and there in the movie, and people will still miss them. Well, he still put them as a message directed to his real enthusiastic fans, thinking, I'm sure you guys have done the research on what these symbols are. So, let me elaborate. First of all, what can I show you? Maybe the biggest board. So, the building is in the back, and you see the radiation symbol here. So, what is this building? It's pretty simple. It's the number four nuclear reactor of Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Number four reactor is where the accident occurred. It was later tightly covered by many uneven layers of concrete to stop radioactive leakage. It was then called the sarcophagus, which means stone coffin. It's a common name to those who were watching news back then, or anyone working in the nuclear power industry. Miyazaki took the image of the sarcophagus and made it look more baleful. He even obscured what it really was on the storyboard. This is the first scene. Here he wrote, a strange building. He was playing dumb by not clarifying what the building was. But he couldn't keep it to himself, so at the last scene, he wrote, in case nuclear power plant reactor. He must have gotten excited as he was finishing his storyboard, so that he couldn't keep it secret. If you imagine that, he's very cute. That's our Miyazaki. He can't hold himself when he's excited. Here, this is my favorite cut. You see the rotten barbed wire in the front? And we all know now that this is an encased nuclear power plant. What this barbed wire indicates is that at first the area beyond the wire was deemed dangerous, but eventually people found out the hazardous area was a lot wider. So the residents who live near the wired area also evacuated, so no one lives here anymore. That's why the wire is rotten. When the accident occurred, the neighborhood around the power plant was blocked. But that was not enough as the contamination continued. So they had to abandon the entire region, not just inside the wire. So everyone had to evacuate within a radius of several kilometers. The wire became meaningless since now no one lives here. So it's rotten. There's a scene that suggests the aftermath. Chaga and Asuka drink in a melancholic mood. It says here, synthetic salted mackerel and vinegared bio octopus, real dried sardine and grilled chicken. It means there are only humans in this world, or... So, the synthetic mackerels and bio-octopuses are both fabricated. There's something called selective propagation of Chernobyl. If you go there now, you see so much nature, but that doesn't mean all the nature can survive radioactivity. There are those plants that can grow well and those who die. Only selected species can propagate. One bird species could nest on a power plant at Chernobyl, but most showed physical abnormalities. That's what selective propagation does to living beings. So, most species except for humans have died out. That's what this menu suggests. 
Then, how hazardous is radioactivity? I think it's number 66. Excuse me again. It says in here, life is not guaranteed. And this one here, it says sunlight. It's warning that there will be sunlight and it'll be dangerous. Isn't that strange? How can sunlight be dangerous? What this means is that the ozone layer has been completely destroyed. And because of that, even sunlight can be hazardous. It can cause skin cancer as ultraviolet rays directly hit the skin. That's how bad things are. No barbed wire is necessary in the outside world since the atmosphere is entirely filled with radioactivity. The ozone layer is destroyed, so just by going outside and exposing yourself to the sunlight, you can get skin cancer. It's a hopeless situation. Next, look at... This one. When I found this, I was astonished. They're still underground. But when the truck comes out of the building, this is what's on the road. The radiation warning symbol. What this means is that the city underground isn't safe either. Only the innermost part of the building is safe. Just by being outside of buildings in that underground city, you're exposed to radiation. Humans have escaped into the dome, but that didn't secure their lives. Radioactivity has started to leak into the dome as well. So, habitable areas for humans are rapidly decreasing. Here's the evidence. Hmm, where was it? <laughs> My bad. It's number 63, so... Here, take a look. In the scene, the truck flies in the air. These roads here, unlike the road that the truck has taken off from, these roads have been abandoned. The cars are left on the roads, and the roads are covered by something that looks like moss. They are no longer in use. This scene mainly shows how the truck could fly in the air. But if you look at the highways in the background, if you look carefully, you find abandoned cars lined up endlessly. And they're covered by moss. This is the proof that this city is not safe. Death is drawing near the entire dome city. And... Wait, let's go back. This image here, this residential building, the truck ascends and crashes into the building. This is one of the highest parts of the dome. And you see all the windows broken. At a glance, they look like trees, but they seem more like moss. It means that the higher the floor, the more broken windows you see, and radioactivity leaks in through these windows. But people still live there. The higher you go, the closer you get to the ground, which is more dangerous. So the rich hide inside the buildings deeper underground, and the poor and unemployed have to live closer to the ground level, where the windows are all broken and nothing can stop the radioactivity leaking inside. But those people have to survive as well, raise their children, and do whatever they can to extend their short lifespan. So these details of the ghetto area where the truck crashes into and abandoned roads show how people live inside the dome under the threat of radioactivity. 
This is an incredible anime made by Miyazaki. I think On Your Mark has condensed all the important elements of Naushka. Naushka uses a metaphor of the toxic jungle, which produces spores. People can no longer live in that area, so the Tomekians and Pejitians escape the spores and shelter themselves. However, the people of the Valley of the Wind decide to live with the toxic jungle. Naushka is a great metaphor of nuclear energy, but as soon as he finished the manga version of Naushka, he was strongly motivated to express like, boom, this is what Naushka was really about. That's really amazing. Okay, now... Uh, number 67. Oh, yeah. Here. I showed you the strange buildings in the back earlier. The image source of these strange buildings, as you might have guessed already, are the cooling towers of a nuclear power plant in Three Mile Island where one of the worst nuclear power plant accidents occurred. These towers are used to release the heat into the atmosphere. Now, these are American designs. You see two types of reactors in the anime, American and Soviet. Now, back to this image. They just came from the underground city. That's where the towers are. The Soviet reactor exploded and people could no longer live on the earth. Then, what about the city they came from? Their city is also contaminated by radioactivity. Now they're receiving energy from American nuclear power plants. After surviving the accident, they still have to depend on nuclear power. These towers insinuate that fact. It's so hopeless. I'm almost done. Now, oh, here it is. This one. Right before the girl flies up to the dark sky, if you look at the background carefully, you see two more sarcophaguses. Beyond the two sarcophaguses, you see Shinjuku that has turned into a ruin. That izakaya, or Japanese bar, where Chage and Asuka are drinking at, the storyboard says it's located in Koenji. The story is about Japan. It's about how all the nuclear reactors in Tokyo exploded. People could no longer live on the ground, so they went underground. So when you go outside, you can see Shinjuku in the distance, and numerous power plants that have caused the accidents. This is incredible. I think if he had to, Miyazaki would have drawn the concert hall where Chage and Asuka played this movie. But he didn't go that far. Okay, give me five more minutes and I'll be done talking about the protagonist, Chage and Asuka. So why would Chage and Asuka free a girl into such a dangerous world? The world outside is entirely filled with radioactivity, so why let her go? There's a reason. So... The secret lies in this picture. As you can see, she's being encased. These people are dressed in protecting clothing while they encase her. It means she's a radioactive creature. She's like Godzilla. Then an airplane takes her away. And that airplane is specially made. 
The plane has a radiation symbol painted on the body. It shows how the girl is contaminated by radioactivity. Not only that, she can spread it just by living. Just by being there, she may unintentionally spread radioactivity that can harm others, just like how Godzilla does. So the ending scene, um, number 86, it's here. The last lyrics. Soshite Bokura wa doesn't say what will happen to them. What happens to them at the end? Well, they die, of course. They went out into the world filled with radioactivity that can kill you instantly. This girl can live there. Or more like, without radioactivity, she can't live. But Chage and Asuka are regular humans, not to mention that they are driving a convertible. Their only fate is to die. That's why they deviate from the road. And the camera zooms out and captures the car, making a complete stop, which suggests how their lives end there. If they were alive, any creator would definitely choose an ending where Chage and Asuka drive the car thoroughly till the end, just like the girl. It's necessary to avoid misinterpretation. The two would successfully escape and perhaps end up in another town, while the girl vanishes into the sky. That's how a happy ending would be like. But in this anime, the car goes off the road and stops in a strange way. It probably means that their lungs bled and they died instantly. So... The girl went beyond the clouds while the two men and the remaining humans will die under the clouds. Now, why are the police chasing Chage and Asuka? They are chased by numerous police planes when they rescue the girl. The police chase them because they want the girl back. There's no point in catching Chage and Asuka. The authority wants the girl because they want to know the secret to her life. Why she can live with strong radioactivity. They'd dissect her to find out the truth if they had to. Some may think, oh, she has wings, so she's just an angel. But that can't be. I'll explain why I don't think she's an angel next. It just can't be. On Your Mark is actually the prequel to the manga version of Naushka. The two works are connected through the theme of artificial life. In the world of Naushka, history has been transmitted orally after seven days of fire, burned all the historical documents and official records. So, what happened before in that world was this. In the real history of Naushka, the story of a girl with wings escaping the evil got transmitted through generations. It got warped and warped and warped until it became that legend of the Valley of the Wind. Everything makes sense if you think like that. The toxic jungle and the giant warriors are all metaphors for Miyazaki. Now that he was done with the manga Nashka, he expressed the true story as an anime. The girl symbolizes hope. Which you see in this tapestry. People die one after another inside the dome city. But there's hope outside. Tomekia and Pijite are metaphors for this dome city that comes out in On Your Mark. Now, I'm done with Miyazaki's second malicious intention, nuclear energy. So I've explained violence and nuclear energy. 
Now, on to the third malicious intention, the girl with wings. We're still on the free part, so please bear with me. I had to spend time on this part before moving on to the next layer, which will flip the previous conclusion on its head. The third malicious intention, the girl with wings. Now, when the three are falling with the truck, Right? Here. Earlier, I said the girl somehow doesn't use her wings and fly. And I told you I'd explain why she doesn't. There's a reason for that. Where's number 51? Right here. Asuka tries so hard to pull her out of the truck and let her fly. Asuka and Chaga keep encouraging the girl to fly. But no matter how much they try, she just doesn't fly. So they all fall and die. This is because she simply can't fly. She can't. And there's no real flying scene. The girl only flies in their imagination. There is an insert of her flying after Chage and Asuka first find her. We see it and believe that she can fly. But that wasn't the case. She doesn't have the muscles to fly. Now, I need you to remember Hal's moving castle. Hal transforms into a bird in that movie and he flies. But when you look at him, he has these huge muscles around his chest and shoulder blades. Those huge muscles allow Hal to fly. That's Miyazaki. He's so obsessed about getting the mechanism correct, especially when it comes to machinery or flying. So if the girl is able to fly, she should have these gigantic muscles around her shoulders. But you see none of that. I'm convinced that this girl actually can't fly. I think it was... Number 18. Where did it go? Oops. I think I tossed it. Oh, it's here. Awesome. This is where the girl first appears. She doesn't have any extra muscle on her shoulders. The wings are attached to them and that's it. Being an airplane maniac, Miyazaki respects this kind of reality. Well, I have to admit that this is not a strong evidence, and you might think this is just a delusion of Toshio Okada. You might say, come on, the angel looks fine as a character Miyazaki portrays, so I'll explain it from a different point of view. Chage and Asuka dreamed that the girl could fly, so they rescued her. I'll talk more about this a little bit later, but she was just genetically manipulated or mutated by radiation. In other words, the wings are fake. That's why she doesn't even once flap her wings. If she really wanted to save Chage and Asuka, she would at least move the wings. But if she did that, her wings would only break. She doesn't have the ability to fly. The girl is a symbol of freedom. Therefore, they rescue her. But the girl is not an angel. She was just genetically manipulated. Um, maybe I'll explain more. Here, she doesn't even have wings. At the scene where the two imagine the successful rescue, Miyazaki intentionally drew the girl without wings. Then, and this is the scene that comes after, Uh, 
I actually wasn't going to mention this in the free part. She doesn't have any wings at this point, but the wings gradually grow from her shoulders. No wings when she's still sitting, but in the next cut, she spreads her wings. This is what I meant by Miyazaki's malicious intention. The three are having an impossible dream. Chage and Asuka rescue a girl who symbolizes the freedom that Chage and Asuka want so badly. But in fact, she's not an angel. She's just a genetically manipulated human who's not even strong. Chage and Asuka reflect themselves onto the girl and encourage her to fly when they are falling. But because she's powerless, all she can do is to die with them. There are often people who are excessively admired by the public during revolutions or social movements, like Martin Luther King or Jeanne d'Arc. People see them as gods or some kind of symbol, even though they are just humans, and they usually die miserably. This is the reality that Layer 2 shows us. Then, why does the girl fly at the climax scene of the movie? After the third hook, what happened to her? Moreover, why does the truck suddenly fly in the air? Also, if everything is a delusion, does that plot contradict with the explanation I've given about the legend of Naushka? Actually, they don't. When we get to layer 3, I'll explain the structure that Miyazaki has designed in order to let those seemingly contradicting factors coexist in one movie. I still have up to layer 6 to discuss. Again, every layer I move on to, I will overturn the previous conclusion. It's gonna be challenging, but please keep up. Free part is done! Now bathroom break and time for a questionnaire! In the second half, maybe I can only finish layer 3, but I'll do my best. In order for you to watch the second half, which is the paid part, you can become our member for 550 yen per month. You get access to the last 10 lectures. You can become a premium member, then you can watch everything for 2,200 yen. Okay, now the result. Urgh, today was so tiring. Oh, thank you. I'll try to finish On Your Mark this week or next Wednesday so I can move on to Star Wars, The Last Jedi. I'll make sure that those who haven't watched the movie itself can still enjoy my lecture. And I'll predict what happens in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker and the new saga that'll start from 2022. I'll talk about what I think it's going to be like. I think I have a good picture of what it's going to be like and I explain my reasons too. Those would be the human affairs issues between Lucasfilm and Disney. Yeah, it's all politics. I think I have good insights, so I'll explain them to you. Okay, goodbye to those watching the free part. Now, let's move on to the second half. Thank you very much. Please switch. Thank you for watching until the end. I am the most famous otaku king in Japan, otaku king Toshio Okada. I started planning to talk overseas about animations and movies popular in Japan in English. Before long, I'm planning to add English subtitles to movie talking in Japanese. So please look forward to it. If you ask a, com a question in this comment field of this video, maybe I will talk about comments as a theme. We welcome the people who are interested in the forefront of Japanese otaku culture and those who want to hear stories of interesting animations and movies. So please sub subscribe our channel. If there is good relation, I will get better and I will do my best. <laughs> Thanks.